May the peace and blessings of God be with you. My name is Anila Jadunandan, and I was with uh, the steering committee who developed this symposium. And I was asked to tell you a little bit about our charter. I suppose this is what's in front here? Excellent. So as you can see, it's here, it's a lot to read, but let me tell you how we came about doing this charter. We wanted a charter that was written from one cohesive voice that represents many diverse faith in our city. It is intended to urge City Hall and governments at all levels to recognize and take action on poverty, especially poverty that affects children. Did you know that 29% of the children in Toronto live in poverty? We don't have to look overseas to find children who live in poverty. It is right here, right here in Toronto. The voices and quotes from our sacred texts came from Muslims, Christians, Jews, Buddhists, Sikhs, Hindus, and others. You'll see it on the charter itself. It is inclusive of many faiths and represents our great city of Toronto and the GTA. This charter is being signed by leaders of the faith community throughout the GTA. As well, we urge you, everyone here today, to please sign it so that we can raise awareness and send a message not only to ourselves, but to let the governments and others know that there's an impetus for reducing poverty. It's very important. And last but not least, if a government is measured by how it treats its most vulnerable, child poverty is undoubtedly one of Toronto's greatest weakness. Good morning. I'm Rabbi Michael Satz from Hoi Blossom Temple. I'm going to speak a little bit about why I chose to sign the charter and, and the action plan that you can all find in your folders. I signed this because a few weeks ago, three weeks ago, Jews around the world had the holiday of Pesach, Passover, where we celebrate the God who, who is the God of freedom, not the God of, of injustice, not the God of oppression. And because of my people's history of of being a stranger, of being oppressed. We know that we are obligated to the widow, the orphan, the stranger, to the most vulnerable in society. My tradition teaches about keeping the corners of your field open for people who don't have enough to eat, to eat not because you're giving them food, but because they are, it's, it is their food to eat. That it's their, It's there for everyone that our, my tradition teaches that in, in the Bible, every seven years, debts are, are forgiven. Every 50 years, land is, is redistributed to break the cycle of poverty, because poverty is a cycle. My tradition is filled with prophets that ranted and railed against the injustice in their city, against the injustice in their society. But I was thinking. The prophets were pretty unsuccessful. Ranting and railing, being a prophet, does not get people to do things. So I found a text from my ancient rabbis who said, that says, a person who resides in a city 30 days becomes obligated to contribute to the soup kitchen. After three months, they're obligated for the charity fund, and then six months for the clothing fund, nine months for the burial fund, and 12 months after you've lived in a city for 12 months, you have to contribute to the repair of the city walls. Now this isn't a, a text about charity. Charity is giving when you feel like it. This is a text about obligation, that you're obligated to the people in your city, even if you're new to the city. And I am very new to Toronto, but I feel obligated to the other, others around me. You're obligated that people have enough to eat. You're obligated that people have a way to, to live. And then you're obligated to the city walls. Then you're obligated to the security of the city. Because I think what this text is saying is that if people don't have enough, the city can't be secure. 
This text, it's, it's talking about, as, our, as our, distinguished speaker, our distinguished speaker said, the infrastructure of civility. It's also saying that the people closest to us are our primary concern. While we all weep, and we should do what we can to help the people devastated by an earthquake in Nepal, or refugees in the Middle East, or any cause you can think of, the thousands, millions of people here, the one in four children in poverty, are our primary concern. This is our life. This is our obligation. This is why I signed the action plan. You all have an opportunity to sign uh, on our, our, our model action plan here at our break. And please continue to encourage your friends to sign online. I sign because it's my privilege to live in a society, to live in a city where people of faith and people of no faith can get together to do action, to make, step, make steps for change, where people can partner and form coalitions, where we can get involved in the dirty works of politics. Because this isn't about being a prophet, it's about doing things. So when I signed the action plan online, I said this blessing, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kishanu b'mitzvotah v'tzivanu lahasok b'sorchei hatzibor. And today when I sign again, I will do that. Thank you, the Eternal One, our God, who makes us holy with commandments and commands us, who obligates us to be engaged in, to be involved in the needs of our community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I now would like to.